Dr. Fauga believes it's time for the economic managers to think out of the box and be more strategic in responding to the current trend in the international oil market. <laughs> Well, Dr. Farah, we're glad to have you on the program. Thank you. Right. We have seen oil price slide so significantly. Can you take us through what the issues are, really? Okay. Fundamentally, the, uh, there's some glut in the oil market now, right now, uh, likely because apart from OPEC countries producing oil and putting oil on the market, we have non-OPEC countries. and some of the countries that are non-OPEC that we used to talk about before, the, f the, 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 the group is increasing in number. Uh, a major addition to the global oil market or energy supply, fuel supply, is United States uh, with respect to shale gas. Uh, we knew this uh, for quite some time that the U.S. Uh, will be putting uh, shale gas on the uh, into our own domestic market, which would then be backing out, you know, foreign uh, crudes, you know, coming to United States, for example, Nigeria. So uh, the economies of uh, uh, some of the countries getting oil, importing oil, is not as buoyant as it used to be, especially even when we are talking about Asia. You know, uh, Japan, for example, their economies have uh, slowed down, and China and India uh, as well. So. We then have a situation where the market is not, oil market is not growing significantly. Whereas the supply, you know, uh, is also uh, increasing, not only from OPEC countries, but uh, uh, non-OPEC countries. So that means that there will be some slight glut in the oil market, and that is bringing price down. Now it's quite obvious that the U.S. has stopped buying our crude. Now, what other market areas can Nigeria explore for crude oil sale? Uh, for many years or for many decades, uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, Nigerian crude used to go to United States. As a matter of fact, there was a time when we were the second largest import uh, supplier of oil to United States. But that has been decreasing over time, especially in the last uh, few years. And you remember that uh, Obama came to Ghana, I guess, about uh, two years ago, when he said openly that the United States might not need uh, uh, African oil or uh, energy from Africa. That was a signal to what was coming. Uh, the the uh, Nigerian oil, if we cannot say to America that used to be a traditional market, we mean that Nigerian oil has to find market in other areas. In the past, when uh, uh, Nigerian oil was going to America, because of the distance to United States and to Europe, and the far away to, to Asia, we used to say that the uh, attractive market for Nigeria oil is United States and uh, Europe. And coupled with the fact that the, the quality of Nigerian crude, you know, sweet American refineries more than any other, not even Europe. You know, Europe, uh, you have, uh, because of the type of products that is consumed in Europe, which is likely they are teeter towards uh, middle distillate. And Nigerian oil is um, um, more favorable for uh, production of uh, gasoline, which is majorly consumed in America. And the refinery configuration in America is more suited for light sweet crude that we produce uh, in Nigeria. So that tends to make Nigerian oil you know, a premium crude in the United States. But uh, uh, when you now look at Asia, China, India, for example, uh, Middle East is closer to, uh, to this market than Nigeria. But in the absence of any other market, or in the absence of declining uh, uh, supply to the United States, Nigeria will obviously have to find alternative route, that is to Asia. And that's, we are now talking about China, we are talking about Japan, we are talking about uh, 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 India. Which, of course, means that Nigerian crude will have to compete with Middle East crude. And, of course, you know, Russia is also supplying crude uh, uh, to, to this region. So Nigeria will now face stiff competition in this uh, Asian market. You know, and whatever happens to the economies of uh, these other countries, in spite of even the 
geographical disadvantage in terms of distance, Nigeria will have to face it. OPEC at its last general meeting, that was last week, decided to maintain status quo in terms of oil production. Why did they have to do that, considering the slide in oil price? And um, what implication does this have for a country such as Nigeria? Since August, Saudi Arabia, the major producer among OPEC uh, countries, signified its intention to continue with the current level of production. And the majority that now agree that no production cut, they were very much concerned with uh, uh, protecting their market share. Because come to think of it, if uh, Nigeria or any OPEC countries reduce their production, the non-OPEC countries will uh, take that sh market share. They will fill the gap, uh, especially in the era in which we, we are. You see, there is a paradigm shift in the uh, global oil market situation now. In the past, when uh, there is a f uh, fall in the price of oil and OPEC wants to maintain some relative high price of oil, what OPEC does is to cut back production. Because there was no major producer that will fill the gap, OPEC cannot, can no longer afford that. Because in the first place, there are so many countries Five, ten years ago, we never heard of them uh, uh, having uh, a barrel of oil or even having any oil at all, talk less of producing and exporting. But that is not the situation. Don't forget that the United States has traditionally, or even some other European countries, have traditionally been agitating for low price of oil because of the effect it tends to have on their economies. And if there is anything the United States, for example, has been seeking, over time, especially since 1973, during the first energy crisis, was uh, energy independence. The can't, the, they've always resented the idea of depending on foreign crews that whenever there is any crisis in oil producing countries, it tends to push up the price of oil to the point that it tends to dislocate uh, their economies. Now, as you can imagine, all these countries tend to uh, and look at a way of solving their problems, if not in the short term, but in the long term. And that is what uh, uh, has happened now. Uh, you've had in the past when U.S. was uh, uh, trying to develop self well you know, and this is likely because they are looking for various alternatives. They are developing uh, uh, solar or uh, transportation through electricity and all whatnot. It's part of the strategy to gain uh, energy independence. But nature has uh, uh, the providence has uh, produced uh, uh, a very realistic alternative uh, for imported oil. That is in form of shale gas. In the next uh, five, 10 years, US will be competing fiercely with oil producing countries. And you can bet it that there are some of the countries now that we may say we want to export oil to. They will have, it's part of political ideologies or differences among them, who probably prefer taking uh, uh, gas from uh, uh, from uh, United States or from Russia and so on. So that is the problem we are currently facing. Well, we heard the finance minister talk about the fact that um, even if oil price goes down to $60 per barrel. Nigeria is ready. Are we really ready? Maybe he knows more than what uh, some of us uh, uh, know. And of course, he's in a better position to know because if he keeps the money and the uh, finances of, uh, if he keeps the finances of the country, uh, he should know more than, uh, than all of us. But the key thing is this. We were doing uh, over 2 million barrels per day uh, oil production, out of which we supply, we export as much as about 1.8 million barrels per day. Now the price was over hundred dollars per barrel. Assuming we are producing uh, 2 million barrels per day and we are exporting say 1.6 million barrels per day and in the face of competition we cannot even be too sure that we will even maintain that uh, level of production or uh, export. Okay, if the price now goes down to as, uh, six, sixty dollars per barrel, we can just do simple arithmetic. We don't need to take a computer or a calculator to be doing what the effect will be 
on our economy. So, but uh, uh, the finance minister is an intellectual. He keeps government finances. Uh, I, uh, uh, I, from my own perspective, I cannot go into any argument. But from what I know, from what I can reason out, and from what you and some other people will reason out, you can imagine that it's not the same thing when the price of oil gets down to $60 per barrel as against when it is over $100 per barrel. Don't always forget this. There are so many fields we are developing in Nigeria that uh, some of the major producers will think twice when the price of oil goes down to $60 per barrel. Some will say that, okay, if the price goes down to $60 to $70, we'll say continue with our major project. But when it gets down to $60 per barrel, it's a totally different uh, ball game. And they may, may have to go back to the drawing board to look at the economics, to see some of the fields they want to develop, you know, whether it could be uh, very much viable, you know, and the returns to, the, uh, to their investment will be uh, attractive enough for them to go ahead. Now, they will mean, that will mean that they will have to look at other alternatives, uh, other places where they can invest their money. And especially in an environment where the companies tend to complain about the uh, uh, fiscal regime uh, we are trying to uh, put up through the uh, PIB, they will now be considering whether they will not have to shift their investment to some other countries that are probably be more favorable. But we can hope that the price of oil will not go down to as low as $60 per barrel for too long. 